The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the childlike. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. The Gospel of the Lord. Today in our Old Testament reading, we come to a very important moment as uh, Moses comes to Mount Horeb, Mount Sinai, Mount Horeb, uh, where the, eventually the Ten Commandments will be, will be given. And like uh, the Old Testament tends to have a pattern of God's call, and it's a pattern I think that fits our, our human uh, sensibilities. God calls us, we ask a lot of questions, we express our unworthiness, and then God gives us the assurance, I will be with you. Whether the call is one of uh, marriage or priesthood or whatever vocation we have in life that God seem, to which God seems to be calling us, we accompany that uh, commitment with a little bit of trepidation, knowing our weakness, but hopefully assured by the grace of God that he is present to us. So it's natural that uh, Moses sets a good example for us, and he will have his moments of strength and moments of weakness, but for now he's the chosen one, and perhaps for now you and I are chosen, whatever it is that God is calling us to do today. Jesus expresses, uh, again in the gospel, a very uh, uh, important reality that God is, doesn't wish to complicate things. He wishes to reveal himself in such a way that even the merest the childlike will recognize uh, who he is. Uh, of course, you and I might remember growing up and learning uh, from the Baltimore Catechism, and it's a wonderful style, wasn't it, for inquisitive little children be, to be asking questions that we might ask. Who made you? God made me. Well, the skeptic might say, no, your parents made you. And we would say, well, they may have participated but uh, it was through God's grace that they were given the, the, the gift of uh, a new human life. And then the next follow-up question is very important. Why? Why in the world did God make you? To know him, to love him, to serve him in this world, and to be happy with him in the next. Our world is filled with people who can't even answer those two questions. And uh, it's important, I think, for us to step back from all the complications and all the wonderment and come to... Uh, an act of faith, which, uh, as I mentioned perhaps earlier, St. Ambrose defines faith as the opening of a door. Faith is a door, and Jesus is knocking at it. Um, this here, uh, Jesus wants to reveal God, and Jesus is knocking. But faith is that act of opening the door. I mean, we might open and see who's out there and shut it. We might not even answer it, or we might throw it wide open and say, come right in, the door to my heart. And we discover when Jesus, when we let Jesus through the door of our heart by an act of faith, opening that door, that he gives us the gift of opening the gates of paradise to us. What an exchange. I'll take it. And uh, it's good for us, though, in our sophistication and our complication, not to forget the most basic of facts of who made you and why, and that we continue living our lives responding to God's call as weak as we may feel, trusting that God will fulfill his promise to always be with us.